is Louise and this is the Big Haired Bookworm channel. Lovely to see you. Hope you are well. Hope you're having a good day. This is not a booktube video. This is yarn chat. So this is the video where I talk about all my latest adventures with yarn. So whether that is knitting or crochet. Um, I have done a little bit of sewing. I've only sewn one thing which I shall show you. Um, so yes. We're actually inside today. It's a beautiful day outside and I did think about actually doing it outside but we have a family of magpies that are outside. I have the back door open so that I can get a bit of a breeze in here. Um, but the family of magpies are outside and they're obviously having a bit of an argument. Having maybe a heated discussion Let's, rather than an argument and they're very loud. Also we keep getting flies in as well. Big blue bottles keep coming in and introducing themselves to me which is nice because it means that they are polite but at the same time I'm kind of like is this your house no out out you go anyway um so if you see the occasional fly whizzing past or you can hear the um magpies discussing loudly um I do apologize for that but we shall carry on regardless um I've got myself a large glass of water here nothing very exciting a bit of lemon in there just to pep it up to be honest um and i think we'll crack on so what we'll do first of all is i'll tell you about the things that i have been there are two things that i have knitted recently can you guess what one of them is and there's also a crocheted object which i have so i've got three finished things three masterpieces that have come into the world from my fair hands um i've only actually got this one the other two have been given to whoever they it was that they were going to. So the first thing I'm going to show you is this, because I want to take it off. Not because I don't want to wear it, because I do, but because it's quite warm sat here. And this is just going to make me warmer. So this is gorgeous, even if I say so myself. So let me take this off and rearrange my hair. Um... There's no right or wrong with this one, really. There's no kind of right side and wrong side, as far as I can gather. And it's quite large. Oh, here we are. It's a beautiful big shawl. And it's the uh, Paris Toujours shawl by Isabel Kramer, which I treated myself to. And it has this kind of wonderful repeat to it of garter stitch and then lace. And it's got a nice um, bind off, a nice, a lovely, a lovely edge to it, actually. So that's the edge that you, you knit and it's a kind of pattern. Um, I believe it was a paid for pattern, so I can't go into too many details. But what is great is that she encourages you to do exactly what you want. So she gives you the two basic um, patterns, the garter pattern and the lace pattern. And then she says, it's really, it's up to you um, how you want them to play together. Um, whether you want it to be six rows or ten rows or you know anything in between it's up to you and the amount of yarn you have now I wanted a big one and that's what I've got so it is good and big it's two full skeins of beehive yarns on her Bardot base which is 80% merino, 20% nylon. This was the Flower Power Fund um, special yarn so that you had to pre-order it and she died to order. And this was called Cuckoo Flower. And I got two skeins of this, two full skeins. So that's two, so I had 200 grams. Um, 200 grams, near as damn it, 400 yards. And I knitted the whole thing and I deliberately tried to get so that I was using the virtual the whole amount and I've got that left out of 200 grams. So I was very pleased with myself. I probably could have done another another row at the end because you end up on this garter on this long that this is the long part on this garter stitch and I reckon I had one or two rows left, but I was I was playing yarn chicken and I didn't want to have to kind of didn't want to get to the point where I was like, oh I'm gonna knob. So I did actually Yes, got a cat coming to say hello. Hello goodies. Sally. My friend my cat Sally's just come in. Oh, good girl. Um so yeah, so that's it. So it is lovely. It is super soft. 
Um, it would make magnificent socks. I've seen quite a few people using this wool and making them into socks, and it would make magnificent socks. And I don't think you'd have to do too much of a, of a fancy pattern because the, there is such a lovely... The yarn's got so much give about it. It's slightly lighter than it's showing on the screen, but it's just... oh. It's scrumptious. The mornings at the moment are a little chilly, so it's perfect for when I'm when I'm taking Benedict to school. I wrap it around me, and it's big enough. It's an asymmetric shawl um, that you could just of an evening put it round you, and it would just be just be lovely. And I wanted a big shawl. My last two shawls that I've done, I've been disappointed with how uh, the size of them. I wanted them bigger. And I think it's just personal taste, really. Some people like a shawlette. It's not really for me. I like, I really like big scarves. I like to feel them all wrapped around me in the coziness and the hug of it. Um, so I now know that to actually knit knit big. I also went up a size. So in the pattern, Paris Toujours by Isabel Kramer I think she says use a three point yes use a US 5 which is 3.75 um, millimeter needle and I used a four and I think that's what I'm always going to have to do with shawls because I have decided I have discovered I am a tight knitter I had no idea but there we are there we are I am a tight I'm a tight knitter it's all a bit tight um so I need to I need to loosen up before I pick up my knitting. <laughs> Wouldn't believe that I'd be a tight knitter, really. You'd think I'd be loose, loosey-goosey, but no, yeah, I'm tight. Um, so, yeah, so I'm super pleased with this. I really like the colour. I don't wear masses of pink. I've probably got one, I've got one pink stripy top, which you may well have seen because I do wear it in videos sometimes. Um, other than that, I don't really tend to wear pink. Um, not because I don't like it. I just, I tend to go for, for different colours. We all have our colour schemes that we go for, don't we? Um, but I do like this pink. I think it's really nice, isn't it? It's lovely. So, oh God, fly. Go away, fly. Um, so there we go. So that's that. So I'm going to put it to one side now. So that I don't get too hot. So that was perfect for me. So in the time that I've been uh, moving, which is the last time I saw you, if you're just a yarn chat person, you're just last. my last yarn chat was in the other house. We have since moved and we've been here quite a few weeks now, over well over a month. And... Um, that was that was what I was knitting on as we were moving, and it was grand. There was that I was knitting on, and I was also crocheting on something, and I have a picture of it here. And unfortunately, I actually only took one picture. I took quite a few, but only one of them came out, and it's that. And that is a neat ripple baby blanket that I was knitting for a friend of mine who's since had her little girl called Neve. And she's a very cutie little girl as well. She's very small. She was very small. She was born. She was born exactly on the day, on the good old due date. Um, that she was very small when she came out. The mum and dad aren't that tall, but she was a weeny one. Um, and so she, she's 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 just like a little. She's still a little doll. Little doll. Look, fly, go away. Grr. Um. So the walls that I used, I used, I have extra, you see, unfortunately, I used um, an acrylic mixture because for a baby blanket, I wanted it to be able to be washable. I wanted them to be able to throw it into the old washing machine should any fluids get on it, which you might not want to go on it. Do I need to say any more? No, so uh, it's 60% acrylic and 40% polyamide, so it's good and washable, which was the point of it. I mean, they have to be careful how they wash it, but 30% mild, you'll be fine. And you can tumble dark dry them as well. That was the idea. Mind you, the weather we're having at the moment, stick it outside. So it's DK, so you get them in these 50 gram balls, and that white is blowing up, and it is proper white, 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 white. So that was the, the end of the ball of that that I had. So I've got that left. Actually, I've got that as well. That's my white that I've got left. The pink that I used, I did know it was going to be a girl. I did know she was going to be a little girl. And so I thought I'd do the the pink. Um, so that's the pink that I used. Same stuff, which I got from Hobbycraft. And that's what I've got left. So I've got a ball and a, 
a ball in a bit and I bought the grey. I love this grey. <gasps> it's so nice. This is silver grey, it's called. Um, and I've got two full balls of that left because I had to kind of, I had to go and actually get some more. Um, and I got that little bit left. Now, I made a bit of a mistake. I normally make with baby blankets, I normally make them into a rectangle and then I applique something on in the corner. And actually, I'd made it too long. So if I made it a rectangle, I'd have been, I'd have been there. Well, she'd been starting school by the time I finished. Not quite that, but it, it was just for time's sake. I just thought I'll make it a square rather than a rectangle. So I'd actually got enough wool to probably make it into a rectangle, but I lost all motivation really. And I actually, she was she was born, and I wanted to give the present. So I gave it to her, gave it to Daddy when she was two weeks old. So that's fine. I mean, that's as long as it's within the first six weeks, I don't have a problem. Um, but I did want it to off my off my hook. Um, I think I used a four millimeter hook. That's what I normally do. So yes, I've got two of these lovely silver grey left. So I actually have enough to make something else with them. Um, I in the edging I added a tiny bit of purple this lovely purple which is just called let's find the colour they're great with naming these lilac so that's actually quite a nice name so lilac so I've got something so I've got oh, one two three four five full balls and then oddments of this lovely yarn left and it's very squidgy so it'll be perfect for other baby stuff so whether I wanted to make um, sorry, I've just dropped the, the yarn. Bear with. I'm back. Um, whether or not I make something, I could either do a toy or, you, I mean, I'm sure you could actually do kind of baby jackets or little items. Um, but it is wool that is designed with babies in mind just because of the washability of it so it's very good and it's very handy and not expensive which is the other thing because I needed quite a few balls of it so that's what I have left of that so there we go and mum and dad were very pleased I've got a lovely lovely message from the mummy um she was still at home I, had, I hadn't only saw her I saw her I saw Neve yesterday actually oh little thing so that's that and then the other thing I finished, which I only finished last week, I finished last Thursday. I finished last Thursday. Um, oh, actually, I've got this on my lap to show you. So the Neat Ripple, go back to the last thing. The Neat Ripple is this pattern, so that you can see it closer up. So it's in trebles. It's patterned by um, Lucy Croft from Attic 24. And I have several blankets of the Neat Ripple. This was her coast blanket, which I did. Freshly washed, actually. So there we go. And the colours have really come out beautifully since I've washed them. So yeah, so I did that. So that's the that's the pattern that you do. And you do so many um, repeats of 14. You can do as many or as few as you like. It's a very good pattern for that kind of stuff and for baby blankets it gives enough interest without there being too much and it means that you can apply things to it like applique to it and um, it all works anyway what was I saying yes so it was my mother-in-law's birthday yesterday and the husband and Benedict were going to go and see her over the weekend I couldn't because I was away with chums hello to chums um I was away so they went to see uh the grandparents little story they're known as grandpa and granddad seaside grandma and granddad seaside because when benedict's older cousins were little uh, they lived by the seaside so to the family they were like we're going to see granddad and grandma seaside because they lived there the, the grandparents that lived by the seaside so they're known so and it has stuck and so when Benedict was born, it was Grandad and Grandma Seaside, even though he doesn't go and see them by the seaside. <laughs> they don't have a house by the seaside. Well, they have a house by the seaside, but they don't. It's a, a holiday home thing. But that's not where we go. So, and he, he he said to me only about six, six, eight months ago, when I said about their surname, he's like, well, it's Seaside. And I went, what? And he's like, 
Well, they're Grandad and Grandma Seaside. That's, they're Mr and Mrs Seaside. Oh, I suppose if nobody's ever said they're not, that's exactly what you'd think. Love him. I had to say, no, no, that no, that's just because of, of where they used to live and, and they were known as the seaside grandparents of grand, Grandad and Grandma Seaside. <laughs> and he thought that was their name. I love my boy. <laughs> anyway... Don't tell him I've told you. <laughs> no, actually, he doesn't think there's anything wrong. And there isn't anything wrong, because there's no reason why, but it's such a bless. And he was really like, oh, I thought they were called Seaside. What a cool surname it was. And I was like, no, it would be a cool surname. You're right. But no, they're not. Anyway. Anyway, moving on. Um, it was her birthday, and I wanted to... I really, I really, really love my, my mother-in-law. She is just such a nice lady. Very, very loving and open-hearted, and is just you know, is there for me um, in a way that people don't talk about their mother-in-laws. I, I have been exceptionally blessed with my mother-in-law and my father-in-law too, don't get me wrong. Um, but uh, my husband is her only son. And my mum always said that you have a more difficult relationship with your daughter-in-law rather than your son-in-laws because, you know, your daughter-in-law can kind of, take your son away from you in some weird way um because you quite often go to the the um the daughter's parents and that kind of stuff it's a kind of an unusual it's a it's a kind of a thing that happens isn't it so you know you you're lucky if you've got a mother-in-law that gets you and she does she absolutely gets me and she's just so loving and supportive and friendly and and just everything you could possibly possibly want in a mother-in-law um and so I just wanted to make her something to say you know I love you muchly and so I bought this the West Highland Way by Kate Davis and I saw that she was doing kits of a particular shawl in here and that's what I thought I'd do and I thought I would make her a lacy shawl in some lovely fabric in some lovely wool um because she's that kind of lady she could wear a lace shawl now I can't really and I do think you've got to be kind of realistic about your good selves as to what you can and can't wear some people can rock a lace weight shawl with panache style and elegance I would just catch it on everything and rip it within about a week I mean do not buy me anything delicate I am it's not that I'm clumsy I'm not clumsy at all but I do catch things I'm that kind of person would you think with my long hair I'd be fine with it and I, maybe that's it I get my hair tangled in it and that kind of stuff a bulky scarf or a shawl I can wrap around me and that feels wonderful but lace things I just don't do I just don't do but I want to knit them. Oh, hello, little fluff thing. Sorry, just been distracted. So I want to knit it. And I, I, I mean, I really want to get into Kate Davis' design. So I just think she's amazing. I would love to do that. I do not wear cropped jumpers, though. So I'm going to have to read it, see if I can extend it down to about there. And she's quite a bit shorter than me anyway. So would it... And then I wonder... Anyway, let's let's not worry about that top. But this is a really beautiful book. It's called The West Highland Way. It's brand new out um and there are beautiful essays and the photography by her husband about the places on the west highland way that have inspired the um designs in it look at those color charts and it's a load of stuff in here which is absolutely beautiful now the shawl that i wanted to make is called the observatory shawl and it's a really it's a hap. So you um, you do the lace panel, and then you pick up stitches, and then you knit the garter stitch, um, basically. So it's nice and simple. And if I can show you the, that's the schematic. Mine did not look as glorious as that, <laughs> but that's that's what I did. And they were selling kits of it. And I thought, right, it was £30 or something like that, 20, £27 or something like that, for the observatory panel uh, pattern. And you get it electronically. Um, 
as well as but I had the book anyway because I ordered the book as well because I want to do the, some other books in there as well and you get the wool and you get what, everything you need you don't get the um the needles and it's cumulus by fiber spates which is 74% baby Surrey alpaca and 26% mulberry sing, silk. And the reason it's called cumulus is because it is like a cloud. And I only have this little bit. I got it in sea green because my mother-in-law used to have this colour hair and has gone completely silver white. And if it would suit me, it will suit her. So I'm very lucky in that respect. She's not quite as... I, get, I can catch a tan very, very quickly. So I, I have got a bit of a... I, a light tan I catch the tan very very quickly and that kind of Scandinavian my colouring is that kind of Scandinavian blonde where I uh, I mean a lot of some of this has now turned some of this white is now natural some of it's not natural quite to be honest um but this was always my colour perhaps a little bit darker but in summer I'd go I'd go this colour and I'd easily tan she doesn't easily tan like I do but she does have a very similar colouring and so this is the kind of colour I can wear so I know she can kind of wear it and it is a kind of a sea green lovely sea green as you can see there and it is fluffy it looks like it's got mohair in it but it isn't it's the the um the baby alpaca is the fluffy and the silk is actually holding it together quite nicely now this is my swatch just garter suit stitch swatch it's not the prettiest i've ever done but that's why um the um pattern says to do i've got i'll put some pictures up here i said to the husband now i need you to take pictures of this and i'm going to hold it and the thing is i don't want me to be the focus i want you to focus in on the shawl you know because i want to be able to show the shawl i'm the unimportant bit and so he took pictures and you can see my slippers <laughs> <laughs> no, you can see my slippers. <laughs> they're lovely slippers, but I put, put it on Instagram. And everyone's going, nice short. Love the slippers. I'm like, yeah, yeah, they're great slippers. I actually need to get some more because I'm getting them. But <laughs> love him. Um, so there we are. So that's what that is. So it says to do it on a four millimeter. Four millimeter? Might even be 3.75. Let me tell you. Yeah, so gauge was, to achieve that, she says gauge was, um, she used 3.75. She's obviously a looser knitter than I am, so I actually went up to a 4.5. Um, so I think I did this at 4, and it still wasn't wasn't right i know it's not critical but i wanted it to be decent i wanted it to be a decent size anyway my mother-in-law um opened it my husband said you're welcome to open it up um before well, open up the present before your birthday which to me is sacrilege <laughs> but i was quite happy that she did because then he could say to her it's actually hand it's hand knitted so any errors in it are completely you know not because of shop stuff it is because louise hand knitted it but she's so pleased with it apparently and and she it's light enough that she can take it on holiday and she can just wrap it around her in the evenings and she's so that kind of lady she's stylish as um way more stylish than i am um i can't i do sometimes feel i'm a bit of a disappointment well i did when i was younger because she would be there. And she's the kind of lady that by nine o'clock is wearing full makeup and heels just for a, a lazy day around the house. Um, and I'm not. I'm not that kind of person. And I was very much like, ooh. Um, but she never she never expected it of me or asked it of me. She just accepted who I am, which is all you could ask, really. So she's a, she's a wonderful lady, and I'm so pleased. She is totally knit-worthy, and I will be knitting her something else, especially if she did, you know, she seems really pleased with it. I've actually made her cushions, patchwork cushions in the past, which she was, she was pleased with it. So there we go. That was it. Those are my three. So two of them are quite big. So actually, all of them are a decent size, aren't they? I think I haven't, haven't knitted any socks recently, but I have got some here. In the kit you get, it comes in this lovely little Kate Davies cargo. It's just uh, just a simple cotton bag. But um, is it organic cotton? No. Bags of ethics, it says. But Kate Davies designs them. It's quite a handy little bag. 
So yeah, so there we got that. So I've got that as well. So there we go. Now let's move on. How long have I been warbling on? Long enough. Let's move on to what I'm working on now. I have woodland blanket. Haven't touched it. Um, my black circles blanket haven't touched both of those are packaged away i know where they are and i could reach to them at the moment i haven't got any crochet on the hooks at the moment apart from those blankets I haven't got any small projects so i might need to to look at that however i don't like having too many projects on the go at once because i feel like i get scatterbrained that looks really dark in there it's not it's obviously darker than in here i'm sat facing the french windows the big, the, the big patio doors, so that I can get the light on, um, on my good self. And the sunlight is slowly coming around, so we're going to have to try and finish it before the sunlight gets around to me. So, the thing that I um, cast on first, so these are masterpieces in work, in progress. So these are what I'm currently working on. I haven't picked these up for a good couple of weeks, actually. But they are very fun when I do it. And they are my Curses socks. So this is a pattern by Zoe. Zoe. <laughs> Zoe Carter of Pins and Needles UK. So that's her podcast and her Instagram, Pins and Needles UK. Um, oh. Sorry about that, my phone started making the noise. Um, so yes, Pins and Needles UK. That's completely confused. Do you ever have that? My am just, your thoughts derailed. So I ordered a kit. It was a Harry, and Spotter, Harry Potter inspired kit, which I think I showed you in the last one. So I got this beautiful project back and lots of other stuff in there, including this fabulous stitch marker. And I got the Gryffindor one. So you could buy um, a house inspired. So Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff or Slytherin. And both the husband and the son are Gryffindors. And so I got the Gryffindor one. Now, can you see it's not coming up completely? You get this little... I don't know whether this is the dye coming off a tiny, tiny bit through wear or whether that is actually in the... in she's actually done it deliberately like that I can't tell when it was in the skein it looked like a pure red but now I've balled it up I have got a ball winder I don't tend to use it though um I am um, it's got it's coming up slightly dappled not that that's a problem but anyway that's the pattern it's called the curses socks and you can see why because of the old lightning bolt um I have the pattern on my phone and I can so I could print it out so I bought the pattern you get the pattern in with the kit of the wool and everything like that. So it is a lovely, lovely pattern. Uh, it's here, it's uh, top down, as you can see. The only thing is, I quite often use socks as my completely vanilla. So my taking out thing, in which case I want it to be absolutely vanilla. Um, do not want to think about stuff. And this, there is a pattern here that could go a bit bananas. I could go wrong. And although it's quite easy, the pattern when you're sitting there, when you've got half a brain on it, it's absolutely easy and you don't go wrong. But if I was to um, uh, be out a, a, at a, out somewhere and start knitting it, I could easily go wrong. I could easily miss a row out and then it would start looking a bit odd. And as I, I'm not doing two at a time, I'm doing one at a time, I need to follow the plot pattern completely, otherwise it's going to look weird. So um, I've kind of stopped working on it at the time being because I'm working on other things, but I do need to... And also the husband isn't actually, you know, gunning for these at the moment because he's very much like, well, I'm not going to wear them, am I, in June? Um, and I'm like, no. So um, I have got kind of three, four months to get to these. I'll tell you what, they'd be good, good car knitting. I think that's the thing. I need a journey, good car journey, because then you're just sat in the car and you you kind of con you can concentrate half a brain on it and you, or you can have, concentrate half a conversation, but you can sit focused. Whereas when you're sat chatting with people, you end up, 
you end up missing a row and then having to tink back. How do I know that? Because it's happened. That's how I know that. So I'm using my normal my normal needles, which are DPNs 2.25, and it is a 72 uh, stitch count. And she does give um, details for 72, which is good. So there we are in my lovely Harry Potter bag, which came from Owl About Yarn. There we go, Owl About Yarn. That was the kit. And I've got a time turner there, which I won't use because we don't want to go back in time because it is all real. I hope you know that. The other socks I have on my needle, as my um, sock measurer, I am doing completely vanilla. And oh, these are lovely. I had to stop myself just launching at them. These are actually a Christmas knit and I'm going to do them for my niece who's announced that she's getting married. Ah, congratulations. She lives in York, getting married. Um, hoping for an invite, but we'll see. We don't know when they're getting married. I haven't seen, haven't seen uh, my brother yet. So this is beautiful yarn. This is from Little Tailoress, and this was a kit that came with this bag. So this bag came from So Sweet Violet. It says So Sweet Violet. So this was the bag which I have used so much. It is probably one of my most favourite bags. It's a good size. It's a good size, it sits nicely. I love this, this velvet at the bottom. Um, and I got uh, 120, you get 120 gram um, yarn kit with it in this wool, little tailoress, and this was the mini that came with it. I'm not gonna use this. I'm, I might do toes actually, that might just be my, my little bit I might do little toes I wish I'd thought about it and I should have done the little one at the top I think from future I think if I get a mini with something I don't I don't I'm not confident to do cuffs and heels yet but I probably could do I probably should just do it but I quite like just it again it's just the vanilla-ness of it but I do like the little um just a little touch at the top that might be quite nice i was watching yesterday little drops of wonderful by starry eyes alley who is just she is wonderful and she's not a little drop she's just a great big gallon full of loveliness and wonderful um love to you um if you're watching thinking of you always um, so she was talking about her socks and she started to put a little row of something on the top and I thought, you know, that looks really cool, but I might do toes. So she might, to so these will be, um, for my niece, this is a So Sweet Violet Progress Keeper, which I just put on for a bit of, a bit of love really, isn't that just jolly? So it's a little ball of stars to keep me happy. And my stitch marker is a sugar skull, look at that which I bought from Crafty, uh, Crafty Cat Nitty Bits on Etsy, who is phenomenal bubs. So there we go. So, um, love sugar skulls, love. Um, it's a lovely, I have to say, it's a lovely wool. It is, it's 80% merino, super, super wash merino, 20% nylon, high twist. I don't have a name on it, so I don't know what it was called. So, but it was a Valentine's kit. So obviously pink for loveliness. And my niece, again, like my mother-in-law, very similar colouring to me. And so I could wear this kind of colour. And she is, I wouldn't say she's a girly girl, but I can imagine her liking this. And I just thought for a little, little Christmas present. Now, I've never done that before. I've never done socks. I've only ever done socks to husband. I've done myself a couple and I don't wear them because I just can't do with that kind of wool on my feet. I, I can only do with cotton on my feet. Um, so I've only ever knitted for the husband. Benedict is at me to knit for him. He's just not going to wear them at the moment, is he? So I'm not going to wear them knit for him at the moment. Although it'd be quite quick, so maybe I should, and then that shut him up. Um, although why people think I should knit for them, I don't know. <laughs> that always, always surprises me when people talk about being a selfish knitter. Slight tangent. You can skip this bit, you can skip the whole lot if you want, but you can skip this bit if you want. Why do people talk about being a selfish knitter? 
It's your time, your energy, your hobby, your joy. Why not have the finished object? If it isn't, you're not obliged. If somebody's bought you the yarn and you've said, yes, I'll knit it for you, that, I think there's an obligation there. Otherwise, if it's just, it's your hobby. I mean, most of us knit for the joy of knitting or crocheting or making something of creation which is creativity isn't it it is our our expression a creative outlet and expression in our lives however we do it whether or not it's us following a pattern slavishly or whether it is designing the pattern yourself it's still a creative expression you are putting your own creation out there you're putting your individual mark on it however you do it um, even just your choice of yarn choice of needle there we are it's it's already different um and so i don't understand why people then say well you're being you know it's selfish knitting or gift i I can understand it is joyful knitting for other people and giving something that you have made again an expression of yourself but really i would like to ban that expression if i was made ruler of the world which no 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 let's not let's not even go down that road it'd be a lot of reading it'd be a big reading list for everybody um if i was made ruler of the world i would probably ban that i would i I don't feel that we should ever put anything any guilt towards our creative expression when there's so much in our lives we don't have the ability to be uh, to freely express or freely choose we have other so many obligations there's something in our life we've carved out a little space for that gives us joy ain't no it's not selfish in fact it's self-care isn't it self-loving anyway soapbox i'm just going to step off there we go down on the floor now so there so that's what i'm doing so i've never knitted socks for anybody else so i'm a bit nervous and i'm going to ask her mum in fact i should really whatsapp her mummy today my sister-in-law Get on absolutely fine with her. I haven't seen her for a while, though. <coughs> I'm seeing her in August. But that will be too late. So I need to contact her, note to self, contact sister-in-law and say, what size feet does your daughter have? That's not going to be a weird question at all, is it? Or I wonder whether to just do them for size six, and then if she's got size seven, then I've got a bazillion other nieces. I have a large family. Last thing. Last thing, last thing, last thing. So this is my latest, my latest cast on in my only sewn object. Now I have something that's cut out upstairs to actually sew, but I made myself an elephant project bag. Now I was going to enter this into the um, previously mentioned uh, Starry Eyes Alley, Little Drops of Wonderful, um make along that she was doing with crochet luna for called the dodgy bag mal so that you would make a project bag whether it's your first project bag or your 15th hundred project bag to make it and enter it um just encourage people to have a go at making their own and so i have made project bags but not that many and i thought oh i'll have another go and i got this gorgeous fabric I love elephants. Um, and so I made it and I wanted to try a drawstring. And inside it has this pattern, which I think, there we are. You can see it's um, princesses and, and unicorns. I can't remember where I picked that up, but I did. Anyway, I picked both of these up quite cheaply. Um, and they're lovely. So I wanted to do first drawstring. I need to put a different string on it. I do like the pop of colour but this is quite a thin ri- ribbon and I really want to get some cord but I don't know where to get that from and we'll get some I could just ma- get some fabric and do that but I'd like some cord but there we go so I made this it's box bottom um it was a kind of amalgamation of two different um two different patterns sorry it's bad you know two different patterns box bottom I actually got the seams absolutely 
correct and fat and it's absolutely fine actually a bit of top stitching on and I like doing it and I'm going to have a go, go with my next drawstring doing it the drawstring at the top but I don't know how to do that a la see that one this might be the way I find out how to do it by looking at this deconstructing this and I can work out how to do it anyway there we go enough of that that's my bag and so this is the hold on I've got the picture here actually prepared well, I'm not I've got the husband to print out the um, the pattern it's the first in the Shaw Society of the third Shaw Society number three so it's the third collection of shawl patterns released by Curious Handmaid who is Helen Stewart and this is the Mathen shawl by Helen Stewart there she is oh in it and all of the shawls are going to be inspired by the book The Secret Garden uh, by Francis Hodgson which we have upstairs if you want to borrow it um, and there it is so I decided quite last minute that I wanted to have a go at I thought right everybody goes on about the see the shawl project hello gorgeous everybody goes on to the shawl, uh, goes on about the shawl project so I thought I really do want to join in I'm just going to do it and I dum da dum dum da nod dum da dum dum da nod um thinking well I don't really want to do an hour and wait but there's only going to be one, isn't there? And then I thought, I don't really want... To, but then lace weight, previously I'd have thought, well, I don't want to do lace weight because I wouldn't give them... I wouldn't wear them myself. But now, you see, I'm thinking I, I can make them and give them to at least my mother-in-law. But I have thought of some other people that I think are truly knitworthy and I could I could do that for. And I do like Helen Stewart's patterns. I have done the amulet shawl. That was like my second shawl and I really enjoyed it. It's another picture of her modelling it um, and I because I like the the way that she sets it out in percentages so that you always know what row you're on and how far through you are and exactly how many stitches you should have so I thought I like the idea of that and I thought, no I'm just going to do it I'm going to do it and I'm really going to try to be so when it comes out I'm going to start it and I had just finished uh, my mother-in-law's shawl so I'd finished it on the Tuesday and I, then on the Thursday, which was the 31st, I thought, gonna do it, gonna do it, I thought to myself. And so I did. And then I realised that the day I'd ordered it was the day it was coming out. So I didn't have to wait or anything. So I got the email saying, yes, you're in and yes, it's going to happen. And then, yes, here's the shawl. And I was like, Whoa, it's, all, it's all happening too much for me. So I had to choose the wool, which I did. And I chose... Now, you have to, it's a fingering weight and it tells you they use a Nabiana May uh, wool. I'm not going to do that. So I went and looked in my stash. What does it say? Superwash Merino. They use Merino singles, but I thought, well, anything Merino y or like that. So I chose Eden Cottage Yarns. It was my first go with Eden Cottage Yarns. And I have chosen this one, which is a lovely, lovely. <gasps> it's the Milbury Four Ply. It's 85% blue face Leicester, 15% silk. You're going to come in 50 gram balls of 200 meters each. Um, and this one is called Rain because it is the, the color that the sky will go. before rain and can you see the sheen on it which is the sheen from the silk and I've never knitted with this before this kind of mix <gasps> and now oh, that's all I want to knit with it just is well it's not gonna be hard wearing is it you're not gonna be able to do I don't can you do socks in these I don't know if it'd be uh, the blue face list is pretty pretty fine oh and it feels just lovely and it's it's knitting up it's joyful it has a real bounce to it which i am loving so i'm up to this far unfortunately with a shawl on a circular needle 
It's a buggered show. So it looks like a kind of a, a bra. Um, which is not what I want. But there we go. So you start at the bottom. No. Yeah. Helen, you're going to be really pleased with how I am modelling. <laughs> I look like I've got grey knickers on my head. Let's not do that. Uh, so you start at the bottom. I start. You start... So the, it's a crescent shawl, and you start at the, uh, the middle at the top, and you work, you kind of work down and out. You know what I mean. <laughs> the power of words, no. So you, work, you start here, and that's going to be my top edge. It has an I-cord edge, which I've never done before. I love, and it is finishing nicely. I've, got, I've had a couple of little moments where I've gone a bit do lally. Um, we've just been doing this we had some garter with a bit of eyelets in then we've been doing this which is quite stru stru structural <laughs> oh I've got bad hair and everything now um, so yeah so that's quite architectural there we go <laughs> I can say that I can't say the other word so yeah so we've got that um, that's just the edge I finished and I think I've got another two I don't know how many rows of that I've got to do. Another couple. Yeah, another four rows of that, and then it's back to garter stitch, and then we get on to more fun things as well. But it's been lovely, and this, this bit has gone really easily. I'm trying not to let it go flying off the end of my needles. Um, this bit's going really lovely, because there's something there to keep you interested, but not kind of drive you witless. It's perfect. It is adorable. But the most... The pattern is wonderful but this yarn i can't i can't even to the gross grocery girl grocery girls who never going to watch this but i love you anyway jody and tracy jody and um, there we go it's brilliant if ever you get a chance of getting some eden cottage yarns in the milburn the milburn four ply oh i can I, all i want to knit with so it's two color that's your main colour, and then you've got another colour that you've got to choose. Now, I really want to use this because this colour brings me joy. I can't lie. That is just... And how beautiful is that going to look? This is called Night Sky. I mean, the name as well. I just want to knit with it but I don't know whether that's too high contrast and it's going to be too too in your face let me show you the picture again bear with me. so hers aren't highly contrasted so I'm just doing I've just done that bit well this is just done that bit so I've got a little bit more and then I go into and it's just a single block of colour and then you go back to the grey. Would that be too high contrast? Now looking at it like that, I wonder whether it is. I just wonder whether it's too, too much. And I would be better to use that because there's a, there's a difference, but it's not so bad. And looking at it, it's got to be that, hasn't it? What do you think? So leave a comment down below whether you think, if you want to, of course, don't have to. If you don't, why not? No, no, honestly, only if you want to. Either estuary, which is this, so the paler blue or night sky. Now, this is the one that brings my heart. My heart goes, yes, like that. Yes. But I think that might be better. I think it's got to be that, actually. I may have made up my mind. I think I can hear you saying that. And then I've got some of this to make my next thing with. And I've got some dark tulip. In fact, I could actually make it again, but with dark tulip and this. Although I won't, because I shall carry on looking for other things. But, oh, yeah. This project is just making me happy if i'm honest it's making me happy now i have some some stitch markers on which i should show you very quickly just for the sake of so marking hello 
marking my right side, I'm using these, which I get from which I got from Yarnistry. And it says RS. I suppose it's the right side. And then the other thing I put on because she said to mark a stitch, and I think she just meant to mark it for the right side. I'm a little acorn because from little acorns, big things grow. And I like the idea of that. From a little seed, something amazing can happen. And we should all remember that when we're thinking, oh, I can't do this, or I'm not good enough, or what have you. From little seeds, great oaks arrive, great acorns arrive. So, great. so there we go. Doing that. Doing that. I am loving it. So those are the three things. Just checking the time. Okay. 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 I haven't shown you much, but boy, have I talked a lot. <laughs> I hope, would you like a little break? Shall I just put some intermission music in? <laughs> For you to have a little break, a little pee break. You can pause me, I'll do my pause face. There we go. In our family, a little insight into our family. When anybody says, can you put that on pause? Everybody in the room has to do that. So, <laughs> which is annoying, because you go, no, put it on pause. And they're like, no, put it on pause. Put the telly on pause. So, you know, if you're watching a DVD or you're watching kind of, You've got one of those digital channel things that you can pause live action. Um, so you can nip to the loo or get yourself a hot drink or something like that. So, yes, pause. We try to get the cats to do it as well. And they're like, no, what are you talking about? Leave me alone. Anyway, there we go. So pause. I've paused. Have you got your drink? I'm going to have a little drink as well. And breathe. So, incoming treasures, masterpieces yet to happen, but inspiration will strike and it will be amazing and gorgeous and what have you. And I have said I'm not going to buy any more yarn. And then I bought some more yarn. I know. So I have some more coming in which may well be today actually, which I have bought deliberately for gift knitting, for my sock knitting for Christmas, which I'm starting already. I know, organised. Um, but I did buy some other stuff as well. So this is the latest one that's come in actually. Do you want to see my address? Do you want to see my address? So, you can send it to me. Which I got from Eden Cottage Yarns. Because she had an update. I mean, she always has some yarn in the shop if you want to go there. <gasps> but she had an update of her Titus. And this is Titus 4 ply, which is 75% merino wool, 25% silk. So it hasn't got the bounce of BFL, uh, yeah, BFL, Blue Face Leicester. It's much more drapey and silky. I really like working with the uh, BFL though, I must admit. It's not going to drape as well, but oh, I love it. But I wanted to get, and I just got myself a selection of colours. I really, and I, I look at them now and oh my Lord, have I done well. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Brace yourself, people, if I can pick them up. Oh, look at that. Heartful. Look at that. So that's a shawl right there. That is one heck of a mummy gorgeous shawl. Look at that. Now, I did buy, so I have recently not been buying one skein of something. I have been buying two skeins of things because then it gives me more options. So instead of buying lots of different single skeins, I have been, my decision is that I wouldn't do that. But then I saw the range of colours and she does all these tonal colours, which just it's Victoria and I think it's Victoria. I can't remember the other, the other lady's name. Um of Eden Cottage Arms, but I think it's Victoria who's the dyer, and she does these most amazing tonals. And I just, I think I would just knit, if I only had to knit from one person for the rest of my life, it would be Eden Cottage Arms. They're just beautiful. Anyway, so these are my, my. I just thought, I really want to get a selection of colours from her. 
and I am very tempted to actually knit this into one thing because it's heavenly <laughs> or two things so it could be two things because I could just do that because look at that <gasps> or that or <gasps> so yeah I could do that and that anyway 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 let me tell you what the colours are. This glorious thing, which is this kind of peach colour, is called Apricot Tulip. Let's see it in cottage yarns. Apricot Tulip. It is 100 grams, 400 metres, machine washable, machine washable, machine, machine washable, put my teeth in, eminently squishable. She should put that on as well. Machine washable, very squishable. So this is driftwood, and it is a kind of creamy brown, and I love browns, and I don't have enough browns. I would have more browns in my wardrobe if I could. This is bark. Woof! There we are. I don't know why I just woofed at you, but I did. This is compost. <gasps> I mean, I just knit with that. Look at that. Compost. And then this is thunder. thunder. So I am. So this was my birthday present to myself. Was this pile of deliciousness, and I will be. I will be knitting with this pile of deliciousness. So that's I treated myself to that. So that is going to be probably one of the um, again one of the shawl society shawls. I am going to use these because and I really I mean I even thought of second then I thought of somebody at the door I even thought of doing a Stephen West because I've been seeing that some people I really like Stephen West's designs and I think they would push me kind of to learn new techniques and what have you but I'm not going to wear the uber super bright stuff that people do I'm just not. I would have a lot of fun making it. wouldn't wear it. And I don't want to make things that I'm not going to wear. I'm not going to put all those hours in and, and not wear them. Nor would I be confident in making them and giving them to somebody else. But I could make some somebody something in this. And they would love me forever. No, I think this is going to be something for me. I think, oh. And I think I can, I can wear it. I mean... We should all just take a moment. I think I could wear that. Is that too light for me? Anyway, stop fondling your skeins, young lady. So that came in. So that was something. You've heard me talk about Sincerely Louise before, haven't you? Say yes. Thank you. I decided... Ooh. So they're um, moving premises. So St. Louise has been based in Brixton in London, South London. South London. South, you have to, don't you? And so she had a couple of sales on because um, they're obviously moving. I think they need bigger premises because she's, she's successful, which is great, isn't it? And maybe a life decision as well. But she decided that she would... Um, move some of her stock but she would also do a sale on some of her stock and so I've got all of these kits of hers and I have yet to make one but this is my next one so once I finished this shawl the um, Nathan shawl I am knitting this yes it looks like a bolster actually I could use it as a bolster and it is this so I bought this kit is that a bit of fluff on it kind of that's is that baby is that coming up baby's pink should be baby pink um it's mythically chunky it is quite chunky i've never knitted with chunky and the thing is about her kits is you get everything in there you get the needle you can choose not to get the needles if you want but i thought i haven't got the needles for this and so it is nine millimeter look at those they really are chunky needles let's all agree there, I'll show you. Do somebody a disservice with that, couldn't you? So yes, eighty centimeter circular needles. But she's, you know, you don't have to get the needles, and it's. I think it is a bit cheaper if you don't. But you get the stuffing, and you get like everything you need in there. 
So they, they don't feel cheap, but at the same time, I got these discounts. I think I got this 20% off. And it is Make Your Mythic Own Mythical Friend, the Uni Cat. Yeah. So I reckon my son will take one, I reckon Benedict will take one look at this and go, I'm having it. <laughs> But it just tickled me when I saw it. I thought, that will brighten my day. And I'm all for brightening days. So this is my next project. Hold me to it, friends. Come round and say, I thought you were going to make that uni cat. Which would be a wonderful conversation we could have. You say that to me. <laughs> and I'm going to keep it in this bag. I've not shown anybody yet. Not shown anybody. You're the first. I don't think I've shown many people these things. Um, and then she was saying, I told you to turn around the sale, and I've wanted to make one of her dinosaur heads because I've got one, I've got a um, carousel horse head which I can make. I've wanted to make one of her dinosaur heads <laughs> for ages. Make your own mythical friend. I know. So it's in this enormous sack. And oh so not only do I get all the stuff, I get this enormous sack as well. Oh, I just you know, I'm a sack for a sack. Aren't we all? I don't know what you're thinking. I'm totally pure. Um so you get again it's done in chunky yarn. Look at that, and you could choose your colour. But I went for purple, and this is my dragon it's a dragon's head basically and so you could get different colors and i went for deep purple so i'm going to have a deep purple dragon head on the wall and you get the you get the the wood that you attach it to at the end and all the stuffing and everything and i think i get the knitting needles in here i'm sure i do yes look at those back on straights <gasps> I knit for a quite a long time. That's how I learned on straight. So I'm pretty good at straight. So this is my my. Pattern. So it looks like I knit everything. Hell, I knit everything, and then I have a sewing schematic. Nostrils, eyes, frills, small horns. Large horns. This is going to test me, isn't it? I'm, I'm up for the challenge, though. Loop stitch tutorial. Okay, I can do that. That's very good. Colour photos. And then mounting your head. Let's just pause for a moment on that, on that phrase. I don't know why it's rude, but it is. Anyway, mounting your head. So it teaches you how to sew it on and, and what you're supposed to do, which is good. I wouldn't know how to do that. So there we go. So I've got this. Not terribly sure how the husband's going to feel when he sees this. And I'm very tempted to do it while he's at work. And so that he comes home one day and I go, where can we put this? Or even have done it, put it on the wall. Does that make me a bad wife? No. I'm a good wife in so many ways. If that's the badness that I do... <laughs> I reckon he'd be up for it. For those people that know my husband, he'd be fine with it, wouldn't he? What else have I got? So I've got my uni cat. That's my next. So that's my next project after the Mathan shawl. Got my uni cat. Um, here we are. <gasps> yes, I got another kit. So I did a couple of kits. I think it's perhaps because these are, um, especially this one, that's not going to be available forever. I've got a very large bag, which I've just kicked. Sorry about that. And I ordered this because I just thought this was going to be gorgeous. Excuse me. Look at that black wool. It's got a bit of colour in it. It's got a bit of shading in it. Oh, it's squidgy black merino. And it came with a set of minis to create a specific thing. So don't think I've just gone do lallies. I'm not really a girl that gets minis, but look. Yeah. And it is to make a particular kind of shawl. I end up with quite a lot of shawls in my... Um, 
my wardrobe, which is good because I wear a shawl most days. It is called the Mecca shawl by Annie, Anna, bear with, I shall put it on the screen, Nikoporowitz, Nikoporowitz, that's what I'm going with, the Mecca by Anna Nikoporowitz, and it, the collaboration is with Gamer Crafting, so she did the kits for it, so you could get, there were quite a variety of kits, the different colours, and I ordered Raven, and the Defenders. So this is Raven, and I think we'd all agree, and if you know me, you know why. My lovely friends, you know why I've gone for Raven, because I love Ravens. I really do. I was terrified of them when I was younger, absolutely terrified of them, and now I just, I'm slightly obsessed by them. I absolutely love Ravens. And then you get these five mini skeins to go with it, so I got, how much did I actually get? I don't think it tells me how much I get. No, that just says, you get all these, you see, you get the whole pattern printed out for you as well, which, I mean, is half of it for me. <laughs> I, I am easily pleased. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, so you get 200... 200 grams of merino DK, superwash merino, no, merino DK, this is merino, this is definitely DK, definitely DK, so merino DK, oh, lovely, and then you get five twenties, so all together I got 300 300 grams and that cost just over 35 pounds and you get the pattern as well which I have to say is pretty 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 impressive um, because this is all hand dyed and you made this large shawl which I showed you did I show you yes I did uh, the mecca shawl so that's what I'm going to make so I bought this with the intention of making it um, at that perhaps late late summer that would work wouldn't it should be fairly quick being a dk shawl and it's blocks of color so there isn't too much changing of color or weaving in ends or that kind of stuff so i was super pleased when that came the raven color is the color i really like so that's what i mean i like deep colors i like bold colors um yeah and then the other thing i saw amy florence on instagram who is sorry bad bad thing Stranded Dye Works, the, the dyer behind Stranded Dye Works, who has the most fabulous podcast, which I am sure you watch. But yeah, Amy Florence on. So yes, so she, I ordered, so he, she had an update and I really loved this colour and I did my thing of not buying one, I bought three. So this will be my last one of this kind of stuff. And it's called Pigeon Fancier and it's the fact it's got this kind of greeniness so it's very much a sea green can you see that sea is kind of all different types of greens with this kind of pinky purple run through and i have another um skein from gamer crafting i've got three of those as well and they actually are kind of the reverse of this kind of pinky with kind of greens in them so actually together they look really nice this is her mcm base which is merino nylon cashmere fingering weight superwash it's called pigeon fancier and it's 400 meters per per skein it's her paradise base so it is absolutely lovely and this colour again suits me so I shall at some point and that's it this is the only thing that I don't immediately have plans for I've gone I've gone this will go in my stash I think it's gonna be the last time that I'm gonna be ordering that kind of thing for a while um because I've got so much I want to knit through and I have plans for a lot of stuff and I'm going to do that so my lovely friends there we go that's it how long is this oh okay so it's over an hour sorry about that but i did pause for you for you to get a drink i've still got mine which i need to finish ooh, ooh, ooh. 
So I've got three projects on the go at the moment and I haven't got any crochet. One of my friends has asked me to crochet a poo for her um, goddaughter, uh, granddaughter. Is that Ruby? So, is it Ruby? So I shall be doing that. So I may well do that next week, I think. I think it's in the next week or two. I shall do that. Um, so the poo emoji, there is a pattern out there on the internet which I've used before, and it's, it's not complicated, it's just a bit fiddly. Um, so I shall sit and crochet a poo. What we do for our, our friends. Um, that's what I've got in my future. A lot of knitting, a lot of loveliness, some fun things as well, which is nice. I'm in the mood for that. I'm in the mood for that. Well, this has been lovely. Thank you so much for everybody that's watched. And if you get to this point and you're still watching, you are a marvel. And I wish you marvellous energy and lots of love today. And for always, really. But for today, today know that I am sending you lots of love. And, um, yeah, this has been great. Let's do this again sometime.